and let it be a sweet, sweet. Come on, say that again. Let it be. Sound. Let it be. Come on. Let it be a sweet, sweet. Come on, all over the building. Lift your voice. Let it be. Say. Let it be a sweet, 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 sweet. Come on, one more time. Sound. To the King of Kings. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound in your, your ear. Come on, church. Put your hands together and give our God a praise up in here. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, worship. Come on and magnify his name. The King of Kings, the Lord of Glory, the Alpha and the Omega. Father God, we just thank you for this night, oh God. We thank you for your holy presence in this place, oh God. We thank you for your shalom and your peace in this house, oh God. Father, we thank you that you're a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Lord, that you are our bridge over troubled waters, oh God. Even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, oh God. You will never leave us or forsake us, Father God. We magnify your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You could be seated in the presence of our holy God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Praise God. There's been a lot of word that has gone forth here this evening already. Amen. So I'm just going to kind of put some icing on the cake if you don't mind. Amen. I guess Darla and I first met Pastor Delise and Pastor Joseph some, I don't even know how many years it's been, 15 plus years ago. and It's when they had the uh, Sanctuary of Love, and um, they had called and asked us to do some praise and worship there. And uh, so even before we got to the service, we took our our troop, our boys were real little at the time, and we met with them in the sanctuary there. And um, prior to the service, we just entered a time of prayer and worship. But, but Pastor Joseph was a man of prayer. And how many know without prayer, nothing happens, y'all? Right? Prayer changes things, right? No prayer, no power. And um, then um, that was actually even before that we were here, and then we started having services here on Saturday night, and Pastor Delise would come out and visit with Priscilla, and they would come on Saturday nights and worship with us. And, and then uh, it's just been, I guess, a couple of years ago that her and Pastor Joseph started visiting us on Sunday mornings. And then about a year ago, uh, we ordained them into the ministry here at the House of Judah. So we're grateful that in that season of Pastor Joseph's life, that he spent those days with us, and Pastor Delise is still carrying on in the ministry. They launched our Watchman of the Wall prayer ministry. It's just powerful on 9 o'clock Sunday mornings. They meet here, and I'm telling you, they are shaking the gates of hell. Somebody hear me? Amen. So uh, we're so forever grateful, Pastor Delise, for, for you guys and all you've done here at Judah. So we thank God today for his grace and his mercy that our brother, our husband, our father, our friend, Pastor Joseph Glover, has received God's forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. Meaning now, huh, that his name is written in the Lamb's book of life, and he is now eternally abiding with Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Now, my friend right there, that is something to shout about. Come on, somebody. 
You know, in, in most cases, the transition from this life to the next, there's usually going to be some pain and there's going to usually be some suffering. And just like a, when a woman gives birth, when a child is about to transform from its mother's womb into this earth, there's usually some pain involved. Come on, I got any mothers in the house that can give me a witness here. Hallelujah. So not only is there pain and stress on the mother, but there's pain and stress on the child it as well. So it's with our transitioning from this life to the next life, there might be some pain and some suffering and some trials and tribulation along the way. But make no mistake about it, one day, listen, we all will transition from this life to the next life. Come on, y'all with me? Every, and unless we get caught up in a rapture, we're going to transition from this life to the next life. Now, I, I, I like what the, the late great evangelist uh, uh, Billy Graham said when he was asked about if he was afraid to die. He says, no, I'm really not afraid to die, but I have some concern about the process. Amen? So, listen, believer in Jesus... There should be no fear in our life concerning death. None. None. Now, the process can give us some concern. But we should have no fear. Because Jesus says, because I live, you shall also live. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 6 and 8, if you could throw this up there, Caleb. The Bible says that, therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be, oh, I prefer, did somebody hear that? To be away from the body and to be at home with the Lord. So that was Paul's preference, to be away from this body, but to be at home with the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can guarantee you this. When we get to the other side, if we are resting in the arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, just like our brother Joseph is now, we will have no desire to return here. What? <laughs> and come back to this struggle? Are you kidding me? I, I, I mean, especially, come on, y'all know, because I see we got some seen, seasoned saints here, right? You start getting to that age where you're creaking and cracking and you get your children to help you up out of the chair. Come on, do I got a witness in the house? <laughs> so, so we go through some struggles sometimes. And, you know, when we get to the other side, right, there is no way that we're going to want to come back to this earth to go through this whole process again. However, as long as we are on this earth, as believers in Jesus Christ, we are on a mission to share good tidings. And that's not just once a year, somebody. Our mandate, I know people like to throw around mandates today. I'm going to put a mandate on you. Is that all right? You are mandated to share the love of God everywhere you go so that we might take as many people to heaven as we can. And listen, I hope you don't wake up every morning when you put, when you put your feet on the floor and say, oh God. God, just get me through another day, and I'm striving, and I'm struggling, and Lord, pull me through. No, no, no. We should jump out of bed. Who can I find to take with me? Come on, church. When you walk out those doors, you're entering the mission field. When you enter your job place, you are entering the mission field. When you enter into your schoolhouse, you are entering your mission field. So once we get to that other side, we are not going to want to come back here. Now, I often wonder this. You know, I think strange things about reading the Word of God sometimes. Yeah, you know, Lazarus was dead, y'all, right? Jesus called him out. I have to think at some point, Lazarus got mad at Jesus. Jesus, what are you doing? I was all, now you're going to make me go through this whole process again. Could you not leave well enough alone? <laughs> B 
but because Jesus wanted to prove a point that he's a God of the living and he's a God of the dead. Amen. So we have a mission field to share the gospel, which is good news. Gospel means good news. How many of you know we could use some good news today? Yeah. Honey, you ain't going to find it on CNN or Fox News. Those are prophets of Baal. That's how we refer to them here at the house of Judah. Uh, a little quiet on me, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and preach on anyhow. So I, I, I just want to do what I'm mandated to do, and that's to preach the gospel and to share the good news with somebody in this house today. Here's our message out of John chapter 14, verses 1 through 7. So Pastor Delise, family, friends, all that are present here, listen. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Pastor Joseph is there now, enjoying his room. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to, a, uh, to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me so that you also may be where I am. Now watch this here. You know the place where I'm going. So here's my question, church. Do you know the way? Not Dion Warwick. Do you know the way to San Jose? No, no, that's not what I'm talking about, y'all. Some of the younger saints probably didn't get that, but that's okay. But do you know the way? That's the question on the table here this evening. Then Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Now watch this, because Jesus is going to turn the whole world upside down throughout the generations, even to today, with this next statement in verse 6. Jesus answered, I am the way. I am the truth. And nobody... That's the Eurisha translation. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. Right there, he just laid the gauntlet down, y'all. This passage right here separates true Christianity. And, you know, in the 21st century today, we have to preface Christianity with true Christianity because there's a whole lot of false Christianity out there today. It's a sign of the times. Jesus said in Matthew 24, in the last days, you shall see false prophets. They don't have a prophetic ministry. It's a pathetic ministry, y'all. They're not prophesying, they're prophesying. Many false prophets, many false Christ will arise. Many false churches will arise. Listen, Matthew chapter 7. Oh, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we do miracles in your name? Depart from me, you worker of iniquity. Watch, I never knew you. Listen, church. They're doing things in the name of Jesus. They're not doing it in 1-800-CALL-THE-PSYCHIC, y'all. This is heresy in the church. So there's a true church, and there's a false church. But this passage that Jesus speaks at separates true Christianity from every other faith on earth. This right here is the dividing line, right here. Let me break some news to y'all. Everybody doesn't go to heaven. Mm. Universalism is a lie straight from the pit of hell. I'm sorry I have to speak so blunt, but I have to preach the gospel. And Paul said, listen, he said, pray that I might present the gospel clearly. I want to make sure that I don't mix up any words here, y'all. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. It separates everything. Jesus said, I'm the truth. Listen to me, somebody. Truth has no tolerance. 
Hey, hey, hey. We're, we're, we're living in a day today, we're living in an age today where everyone wants tolerance, but there's no tolerance in truth. Come on, y'all. One plus one is two. It's truth. Honey, I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you think. Well, today I feel like one plus one might be three. Oh, uh, today I, I think one plus one might be five. Could you imagine if an engineer built a building on that math, how he felt that day? It would be not safe. Why? Because the foundation Oh, y'all need to hear this. Wouldn't be correct. I'm telling you, this is the foundation. It's the truth of the Word of God. Let, let me make this a little more current for you, okay? One plus one equals two. Truth. It doesn't shift. Genesis chapter one. God created them. Male. A female. Y'all with me here? I don't care if on Tuesdays you feel like a woman, but you were born a man. I don't care. Mm. Truth is not tolerable, church of God. It doesn't matter what your truth is. You know, that's the new thing today. You hear people, oh, this is my truth. Well, your truth is a lie. Is it, there's only one truth. His name's Jesus. As there's only one. So either Jesus, listen, is the truth or he's not. Make your choice. He's either the truth or he's not. Because of the things that Jesus proclaimed throughout the Gospels in his life. You know, when he said, before Abraham was, I am. That's not a grammatical error in your Bible. No, 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 no. See, see the Pharisees understood what he said. That's why they wanted to pick up rocks and stone him. Because he was proclaiming deity. Right? So because of the things that Jesus Christ said and the proclamations that he made about his Listen, Buddha never said that he could save anybody. Muhammad never said that he could save anybody. Jesus said he is the salvation. It's his name, Yeshua, salvation. But here's the thing. Either Jesus is a liar because the things that he said would have been a lie provable lies or he was a lunatic could you imagine people walking around the earth today claiming that he's that i'm god that you, you lock him up and put him in an insane asylum right so either he's a liar he's a lunatic or he's lord so my friend if you don't know jesus today you have that trilemma before you you have to make a decision either he's the liar He's a lunatic or he's Lord. In this house, we confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Come on and put your hands together and give him a praise in this house. Now, Jesus said, I'm the way. The way to where Jesus is in heaven is li listen, you can't go Google it and get it on your map quest. You know, if you have that new one, that Waze that everybody's using nowadays. No, 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 no. Waze is not going to get you there. But the way is a person. The person's name is Jesus Christ. And hear me, somebody. It's a one-way street. There are no alternate routes. Well, pastor, why did he only create one way? I really don't know that theological question, but I thank God that he made a way, somebody. One way. So let me ask you the question again. Do you 
know the way. The way is not through anything that you do, how good you are, or the things that you don't do. It's not, you don't find the way through morality. The way is not through membership of ABC Church, of any denomination. I was born a Catholic, I was raised a Catholic, I'm going to die a Catholic. Uh, oh, Holy Ghost, help me. I was born a Baptist, I was raised a Baptist, I'm going to die a Baptist. I was born holiness, I was raised holiness, I'm going to die holiness. Listen, my friend, if you don't know Jesus, you're going to be born whatever, you'll live whatever, and you're going to die and go straight to hell and bust the gates of hell right open. That's the truth of the Word of God. These aren't my words. Pastor, you're offending me. Thank you very much. Because the Bible says that the cross of Jesus Christ is offensive to those who are perishing, but to us, it is the power of God. Come on, somebody in the house. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Jesus said, do you know the way? Make no mistake about it. We got to know Jesus on a personal, personal level. Level. Being brought up in a church doesn't make you any more a Christian than if, than if you were brought up in a doghouse make you a dog. Come on, somebody. But you know, a lot of folk, well, I was brought up in the church. Church can't save you, y'all. I can't save you. This building can't save you. This fellowship can't save you. There's only one who could save you. Make no mistake, it's Jesus on a personal level. We know the way. If you don't know him personally, listen to me. It's very simple. You're lost. Oh, it's really that simple. Period. Jesus is our GPS. I'm not talking about a global positioning system. I'm talking about a God positioning system. Y'all with me? Jesus is our God positioning system. And he, the, the Holy Spirit is like that little voice. Anybody use those little road maps and Google in a car, GPS systems? All right, now we're in church, so you got to be honest. Anybody but me ever still get lost with a GPS system? <laughs> yes. Now, 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 you know, like you're driving in that thing, right? You're driving. And all of a sudden, it starts, you, you know, it starts doing, doing you, that little voice. That little, uh, this woman's annoying anyhow, you know. But she comes out saying, you know, rerouting, rerouting. You're like, oh, which way? Now you're in traffic. You don't know which way you're going. This thing's spinning around, and you're like freaking out. And right, come on, do I get a witness in this house? Right? Well, he, here's the one I really like. Watch this. You're, you're driving down a highway, and it says, make a legal U-turn. Come on, do I get a, anybody get that one? Here it is, listen. The Holy Spirit today is speaking to somebody. Say it's time to make a legal U-turn. There's a word in the Bible for that. It's called repentance. It's called, I'm going to change the way I think. I'm going to change the way I act. I'm going to change the way I live by the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, is anybody in here made that legal U-turn and thankful? My, my. My, my. God has given us the Holy Spirit to reroute us, church. He lets us first know that we're lost. Because how many of you know before you came to Jesus for a long period of time, you didn't even realize you were lost? Till one day you heard the word go forth, something started turning around in your heart, and you said, uh oh, Houston, we got a problem. 
And then we changed. We invited Jesus in and changed us. We made the legal U-turn. We got set on the right course. So now if we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, he will usher us in to our appointed destination. Jesus is the way. The Holy Spirit is our God positioning system. And he will bring us home to the Father, just like he did with Pastor Joseph. On time, every time. Somebody in the house of Judah, give our God a praise. First Thessalonians 4 and 13. Brothers, sisters, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who have fallen asleep. Our brother Joseph, he's just asleep, resting with Jesus. And we don't want you to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Listen, it's okay to grieve, family. There's a, a, a hole, there's a void in your life now. But we don't grieve like those that have no hope. Because our hope is in Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, he's not sending an underling, y'all. The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet call of God, the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left to be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Come on, somebody give our God a praise. You know, I, I, I like that passage. You know, we've been studying Daniel, and we, we looked at the passage in Daniel where it talks about the clouds and Jesus coming with the clouds. You know, Jesus is coming to get us. The Bible says that we're going to meet him on the, in the air on the clouds. Because remember, listen to me, we are going to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Y'all with me? We go as the bride of Christ. We don't need to call an Uber, huh? We don't need a Pat bus. We don't need to hire no limousine. No, no, we're riding first class on a cloud. Come on, somebody in the house. Man, what a ride that's going to be. Woo! Jesus said in John 14, I am the life. There is no other prophet, no other religious leader in all of history that has made claims like the saints of God. So church, let me encourage you today. Pastor Joseph, he knew the way. He knew the truth. He knows the life. So therefore, he has reached his appointed destination. There's a day coming when we are all going to have one huge family reunion. Jesus is going to return. I can't speak for you, but I look forward to that day being re reunited with my loved ones, my family, and Pastor Joseph, and to meet Peter, and Paul, and Daniel, and Moses, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and, and let them tell their stories. I mean, what great story time is that going to be, huh? What a testimony night in heaven. So I can't wait to see all of them, but most of all, church, I'm looking forward to meeting the lover of my soul face to face, Jesus Christ our Lord. Come on, somebody give him a shot in the house. So let me finish this up. That leads me to this question. On your appointed day, we all have one. Hebrews 9, 27. It's appointed once for a man to die. Then, the judgment. Ooh, you can't talk about judgment in the church today. Ooh. 
can't talk. You can't use the word hell. Ooh. You know, Jesus used the word hell. As a matter of fact, he put it this way. The gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God. Mm. So there's an appointed time. There's an appointed day. There's an appointed hour for each and every one of us. You can't change that appointment. You can't reschedule it for next week. When you're going to meet with your manager, you can't call in sick and say, oh, I can't make my appointment. No, no. You will show up at the appointed time. When you meet Jesus face to face, what words will you, will you hear? Will you hear, well done, my faithful servant, or will you hear, depart from me, you worker of iniquity? Do you know the way? Is he guiding you through his GPS system back home? Because how many of you know this is not our final destination? This is not our home. We are on a journey. We need the GPS to get us back home where we belong. Can you truly sing the song, Amazing Grace? How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind. Come on, y'all. But now I see. Without being born again, the Bible says in John chapter 3 that you can't even see the kingdom of God. That's what Jesus says first. You have no perception. You have no understanding. You might be sitting in this crowd of, what's that preacher even talking about? Because if you're not born again, you can't perceive the kingdom of God, let alone enter it. But when you become born again, when you become filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God opens your eyes and you're able to now perceive the kingdom of God. But it takes first repentance. Without being born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Listen, my friend. This is the most important decision you will ever make, and that is of surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. Right now, I want to invite you to surrender your life to Christ. Repent from your sin and follow Jesus Christ and confess him as Lord. Now listen, I'm, let me be clear. I'm not asking you to join a church that has nothing to do with it. I'm not offering you a right hand of fellowship. I'm asking you if you would like to join the family of God. You could go to church every day of the week and still not be a part of the family of God. As I said last days, Jesus said there's a lot of false preachers, a lot of false teachings that are going to rise. There's a different gospel being preached today. My friend, there will be millions and millions of people, millions of people who go to church all the time that will not make it into heaven. Simply because they did not trust and put their faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation has nothing to do with you being Pentecostal, Baptist, or Catholic. I don't read those words anywhere in my Bible. My Bible says in Revelation 7-9 there will be people from every tongue, every tribe, every nation, every language. Black, white, purple, green. All over the world gathered around them. That's why we need to start modeling it here, church. We need to have an earthly representation here on earth. Jesus prayed, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as, like in uh, heaven as it is, or like as in heaven as it is on earth. Did I say that backwards? As in, y'all got it. Come on, somebody help me preach, y'all. <laughs> but what does heaven look like? Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every language. Doesn't matter how much melanin you have in your skin, you stand around the throne worshiping our God. I wish somebody in this house would do it. Mm. 
Mm. Now listen, I'm not trying to embarrass anybody. I'm not trying to offend anybody. But listen, y'all, if I were a doctor and I saw a report that showed that you had a treatable disease, but I neglected to tell you about it and offer you the cure even though I had one because I didn't want to offend you, because maybe I didn't want to embarrass you, because I, I, I didn't want to hurt your feelings, and you went on and died, you would sue me for medical malpractice. You'd be calling 1-800-JUDGE-JUDY. Come on, y'all. So as a medical doctor, by telling you, listen to this, by telling you the truth is not hate speech. Because you know in our world today, truth is the new hate speech. It would not be hate speech. It would be love speech. Calling sin, sin is not hate speech, but it's love speech. All right, I'm going to meddle for just a minute here. Calling adultery, sin is not hate speech. Calling out fornication, calling out homosexuality, calling out drunkenness, calling out hatred, calling out racism, calling out stealing is not hate speech, my friend. It's love speech. As a preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I refuse to be accused of spiritual malpractice. My friend, listen to me. 525 Market Street is not a hospice. Do y'all know what a hospice is, right? That's a place where you go and they make you comfortable just till you move on to the other side. I refuse to shoot you up with spiritual narcotics that numb you from the truth of the Word of God and watch you bust hell right open. Come on, somebody in the house of God. Thank you, Jesus, for your truth. The Bible says it's the truth, honey, that will set you free. Who's the truth? Jesus. Come on, we could go around this room and we could hear all kinds of testimonies from where God brought us from. I don't know about you, but he had to find me under a lot of dark areas. I can't speak for your testimony. I can only say what God has done for me. I can only testify his goodness in my life. My, my. So today, I'm offering you, listen, a true vaccine. I'm just trying to speak in current day vernacular, y'all. Because you hear this word five zillion times a day on the televisions and radios. So I want to offer you a true vaccine for your virus. And it's not called COVID, baby. It's called sin. And this vaccine is foolproof. Even after 2,000 years, the vaccine is called the blood of Jesus Christ, if there is anybody that has received a true vaccine in this house, put your hands together and give our God a praise in here. Hey. We serve a mighty God. He spared no expense in sending his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross while we were yet filthy, dirty sinners.
Because God so loved you. Put your name in there. That he gave his one and only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish. But have everlasting life. That's what we're here for today, Pastor Delise. We're celebrating a life because we know that Pastor Joseph put his faith and his hope and his trust in Jesus Christ. He didn't put his faith and his hope in a church. He didn't put his faith and hope in a government. He didn't put his faith and hope in another man. But it was because Jesus Christ. So once again, the message boils down to Jesus. Today you're sitting here. You need to make a decision, my friend. He's either a liar. He's a lunatic. Or he's Lord. History proves. History proves. Jesus of Nazareth lived. History proves that. They still haven't found his body, by the way. Muhammad is still in the grave clothes. Confucius is still in the grave clothes. Buddha and all the others that come along still wearing the grave clothes. Well, how do you know he, he was raised? How do you know? Well, listen, my Bible tells me, which is authentic, because there's more than 12,000 fragments of Old Testament or New Testament scripture that verifies what we're reading is true history. The Bible says that there were 500 witnesses that seen him. I don't know if you've ever been to court. Anybody? But No, I'm just kidding you. When you go to court, if there's one eyewitness, you're in trouble, honey. If there's two or three or five, you're done. We're talking 500 eyewitnesses that seen Jesus alive. So you can struggle and fight with that all you want. But those are the facts. So today, would you ask Jesus, if you haven't already, to be the Lord and Savior of your life. I'm going to ask everybody in this room to stand with me, please. I'm going to say a simple prayer, and I would like everybody in the room to repeat this prayer with me. It's a simple prayer of faith. Come on, saints, pray. Be praying, be praying, be praying. This is kingdom business right now, y'all. This is kingdom business. I'm going to ask every head to bow, every eye is closed, and we're going to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. I realize today that I'm a sinner, that I've fallen short of your glory. Today, I ask Jesus to forgive me for all my sins to cleanse me from all unrighteousness today I'm born again I'm filled with his spirit today my name is written in the Lamb's book of life in the matchless holy name of Jesus amen Come on, Judah, put your hands together and give our God a great big praise in this house. Now, if you're here, and this is the first time you've really prayed that prayer from your heart, because how many, how many of you know, sometimes we just pray from our head, we've learned little prayers and whatever. But today's the first day you really prayed it from your heart. You really meant it. It wasn't from slick words from some preacher. No, 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 no. That's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says it's by the foolishness. This is foolishness. The foolishness of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If that was you, I want to invite you.
to please, after the service is over, please come and look me up. Come down, find somebody from Judah. We want to give you a Bible. We want to give you some literature. We want to get you plugged in. If you're not from the area, we, we know lots of good churches, solid churches around the Pittsburgh area. We want to get you plugged into a home because it's important to be in church, y'all. I don't care COVID or not. I thought I was done, but let me say this. Forsake not the gathering of the saints as some are in the habit of doing. Through those first eight weeks of COVID when we were closed down here, St. Mattress was getting kind of comfortable, but you know what I'm talking about. But God has called us together. It says forsake not, and it says even as the capital D-A-Y is approaching, we're living in the last days. It's high time to get plugged into a local fellowship, somebody. So if you're here and you've prayed that prayer, please, we don't want to make a spectacle of you, but we want to talk to you. Amen. Amen. So as we commit our brother, our husband, our friend, Job 19 and 26 and 27 states, yes, brother, I know that my Redeemer lives and that in the end he will stand on the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. I myself will see him with my own eyes. I and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Psalms 116 verse 15 states, Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of one of his saints. So as our brother transitioned from this world to the next, it was precious in the sight of our God. So for as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of our brother, son, father, Joseph Glover, we therefore for commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for that blessed hope when the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of the archangel, with a trumpet call of God, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive and remain will caught up be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. So, Glover family, be comforted by the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you know your brother, your husband, your father is resting in the arms of Jesus. I can assure you this, he is more alive today than he ever was. Come on, somebody put your hands together. So, Father, we thank you for this time together. We bless your holy name, Father God. Father, we pray that your word has just penetrated our hearts, Father God, Lord. Father, that it, it found good soil in our hearts, Father God, that it might bring forth fruit out of our lives, that we might be transformed even into the image of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we'll be careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in the matchless holy name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Amen. God bless you.